Russian and Ukrainian forces exchanged artillery fire in Ukraine on Friday, even after Moscow said it had ordered its troops to stop shooting for a unilateral truce that was firmly rejected by Kyiv. Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the 36-hour ceasefire from midday on Friday to observe Orthodox Christmas. Kyiv has said it has no intention to stop fighting, rejecting the purported truce as a stunt by Moscow to buy time to reinforce troops that have taken heavy losses this week. What ceasefire? Can you hear? said a Ukrainian soldier using the nom de guerre Vaishnia, as an explosion rang out in the distance at the front line near Kremina in eastern Ukraine. What do they want to achieve if they keep on shooting? We know, we have learned not to trust them. Russia's defense ministry said its troops began observing the ceasefire from noon Moscow time, along the entire line of contact, in the conflict, but said Ukraine kept up shelling populated areas and military positions. Reuters journalists heard explosions, which Ukrainian troops described as incoming Russian rocket fire, Ukrainians fired back from tanks. The Ukrainians said it was quieter than many other days because snowy weather had made it hard to fly drones and spot targets. The situation today is exactly the same as yesterday, the day before yesterday, last week and last month, said one, concealing his face with a scarf. There is no point in talking to them, in believing in their promises, orders and decrees. It was not immediately possible to establish whether there was any reduction in the intensity of fighting at other locations. One witness in the Russian-occupied regional capital, Donetsk, close to the front, described outgoing artillery fired from pro-Russian positions on the city's outskirts after the truce was meant to take effect. The Ukrainian governor of the frontline eastern Luhansk province, Serhii Heyday, said that in the first three hours of the purported ceasefire the Russians had shelled Ukrainian positions 14 times and stormed one settlement three times. Russia's Orthodox Church observes Christmas on January 7. The main Orthodox Church in Ukraine has rejected the authority of Moscow, and many Ukrainians have shifted their calendar to celebrate Christmas on December 25, as in the West. Putin attended a service by himself inside a Kremlin cathedral rather than joining other worshippers in a public celebration. State television showed two live clips of Putin inside the gilded cathedral of the Annunciation as Orthodox priests conducted the midnight service, known as the Divine Liturgy. Washington unveiled its latest $3.75 billion U.S. package of military aid for Ukraine and allies affected by the war, for the first time sending Kyiv the U.S. Army's workhorse Bradley fighting vehicles. That caps a week in which both Germany and France also pledged armored vehicles, finally fulfilling one of Kyiv's most urgent requests from its allies, for armor to defeat Russian tanks in mechanized battles. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who pleaded for the Bradleys in Washington last month on his first trip abroad since the war began, said on Friday they were, exactly what is needed. The U.S. package also includes Sea Sparrow air defense missiles, and Germany's includes Patriot missiles, which Washington offered last month. Shortly before the ceasefire was meant to start, rockets slammed into a residential building in the Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk close to the eastern front line, damaging 14 homes, though with no casualties as many people have fled. It's bad, very bad. We need to pressure, Russian forces, get them to leave, maybe more air defense systems would help. This happens often, not only on festive occasions. Every other day, said Alexander, 36, outside a supermarket at the time of the attack. One rescue worker was killed and four others injured after Russian forces shelled a fire department in the southern city of Kherson before the deadline early on Friday, the regional governor said. Reuters could not immediately verify this. Zelensky rejected the ceasefire out of hand as a ploy for Russia to buy time after sustaining crippling losses at the front line. Scores of Russian troops were killed in one attack over the New Year weekend. Laura Cooper, a U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense focusing on Russia and Ukraine, remarked to reporters in Washington on Friday that Putin's statement about a ceasefire needed to be taken with a grain of salt.
This is the same man who said he would not invade Ukraine, Cooper said. Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, starting a war that has killed tens of thousands of people and displaced millions of Ukrainians. With weapons and financial support from the United States and Europe, Ukraine has driven Russia back from some of its territory but battles are raging in the east and south. Ukraine's military general staff said its soldiers repelled repeated Russian attacks over the past day, with Moscow focused on trying to take towns in Donetsk. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Thursday that Russia was seeking a truce to use as a cover to stop Ukrainian advances in the eastern Donbass region and bring in more men and equipment. They now want to use Christmas as a cover, albeit briefly, to stop the advances of our boys in Donbass and bring equipment, ammunitions and mobilized troops closer to our positions, Zelensky said in his nightly video address, speaking pointedly in Russian rather than Ukrainian. Earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his armed forces to observe a unilateral 36-hour ceasefire in Ukraine this weekend for the Orthodox Christmas holiday. What will that give them? Zelensky said. Only yet another increase in their total losses. He said that the war will end either when your soldiers leave or we throw them out. Zelensky adviser Mikhailo Podolyak tweeted that Russian forces must leave the occupied territories, only then will it have a temporary truce. Putin did not appear to make his ceasefire order conditional on a Ukrainian agreement to follow suit, and it wasn't clear whether hostilities would actually halt on the 1,100-kilometer front line or elsewhere. Ukrainian officials have previously dismissed Russian peace moves as playing for time to regroup their forces and prepare for additional attacks. At various points during the war that started on February 24, 2022, Russian authorities have ordered limited and local truces to allow evacuations of civilians or other humanitarian purposes. Thursday's order was the first time Putin has directed his troops to observe a ceasefire throughout Ukraine. Based on the fact that a large number of citizens professing orthodoxy live in the combat areas, we call on the Ukrainian side to declare a ceasefire and give them the opportunity to attend services on Christmas Eve, as well as on the day of the Nativity of Christ, Putin's order stated, addressed to Defense Minister Sergei Shigu and published on the Kremlin's website. Independent political analyst Tatiana Stanovaya said Putin's ceasefire order is intended to make him look reasonable and interested in peace. The move fits well into Putin's logic, in which Russia is acting on the right side of history and fighting for justice.